got any viewers yet? It don't matter. Welcome to Cooking with Nay Nay and, and Murray. Proudly brought to you by Hagel Lawson Company. Do you have Leaders in Southern Pottery, Advertising, Antiques Collectibles. Oh, Lord. Come see us anytime. 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. Oh, my God. Stop right. with that. Oh, my God. You're funny. Take a lot of coming. You got on work. Cooking with Nene and Murray. We've been uh, contemplating this while we've been in uh, um, incarceration. <laughs> this is not incarceration. Incubation. That's not that either. It's uh, quarantine. Quarantine. So, this kind of give you the kind of the backstory behind all this is uh, um, I've always loved to cook and uh, been and evidently I'm pretty good at making chicken and dumplings. Oh yeah, he is. So uh, every time we have lunch at church, everybody wants to know, hey, did you cook chicken and dumplings? So it's always been a, you know, so I sit there thinking what could we what would be the first step so we didn't have to be chicken and dumpling and um because um <laughs> who else like um oh like my niece jennifer jennifer Gilliland. jennifer Gilliland, this is for you we can't do it i promise you that uh i don't know if this batch is going to be making it to you or not but i will make you a batch but I'm gonna teach you how to make them here today. So, um, and y'all, I see that there's people putting comments up there, but I we're, like, we're a little further away to read it. I will walk over there and read the comments here in just a minute. So, because uh, I am a very important part of this. But the, uh, the get the uh, stuff out of the freezer. Yes. Refrigerator. This is my sous chef, my Murray chef. But, uh, but the secret. Of making good chicken and dumplings is to keep all your ingredients in the refrigerator. You got to start with cold chicken broth, cold um, Crisco. I never put the flour in the refrigerator, but if you wanted to, you could, but we don't do that. But to start with, I always cook the chicken. It's a bone inch. I usually get a whole chicken, but uh, I guess with all the um, hoarding, right? <laughs> the only thing I could get a whole chicken cut up, so that's what I had to use this time. But I mean, it's just fine as long as it's got the bone in it, uh, gives it better flavor. And the way we start, we cook it the day before, and uh, she cooks the chicken. All right, I use three. These containers of uh, chicken broth um, in a big stock pot, and um, a, a half a teaspoon. You have a teaspoon of celery seed, um, a tablespoon of celery flake, um, and a half a um, teaspoon of onion powder. And, uh, and a half a teaspoon, not a half, um, yeah, half a teaspoon, half a tablespoon of uh, black pepper. Put that in the stock pot, boil your chicken for about 45 minutes. And another secret to this is, as I found is, if you leave, when you when you cook for 45 minutes, your hey, chicken. Hey, Robin. Just, um, Turn it off, let it get to room temperature, and put it in the refrigerator overnight. And it's almost like duck com feed. It, it really, you know, was sitting in that hot stock until it cools off, and then in the refrigerator it sits in the hot. And the chicken is just, just so tender. But one thing to remember, because like I say, I make this at church every time we have lunch at church. I make chicken and dumplings. There's nothing that will make you cuss on Sunday morning more than waking up to come in here at like seven o'clock and make chicken and dumplings in the stock pot of chicken is still sitting on the oven 
because we forgot to put it in the refrigerator the night before. So always remember, <laughs> put, always remember, Murray, <coughs> to put your chicken in the refrigerator, in the refrigerator. Keep your chicken cold. Yes, right. Keep your chicken cold. Anyway, so we're going to get started. So we've cooked the chicken. I'm going to go ahead, um, Murray, if you don't just pick up the camera and just come over here, we're going to go ahead and get started on the broth and get it cooking, and then we'll come back and make the dumplings. I'm not sure I enjoy taking orders so much. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're going over here to this. So we got the stock here. We're just going to turn it on, get it cooking. Lord, I can't find it. This, I'm gonna have y'all just gonna have to bear with us since we don't know what the heck we're doing. There we go. All right, here we go. We're gonna use a whole quart of whole milk. Just pour it in the stock into the chicken broth, and um, a stick of butter. And we're gonna put our chicken in there. Or don't slop it in there and knock it um, everywhere. Could I leave a bone in there? Uh, this piece of gristle. Wow. Put our chicken in there. And uh <laughs> this is really scientific uh accurate here. But I usually I got an extra chicken broth. And see that little oops. Lord, you're just sloshing it everywhere. And I just pour enough broth to get it up to that first bolt there in the handle. I know That's everybody's... pretty scientific. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Hey, Scott. Uh, hey, Kara. Hey, Jeff. There we go. Rosa. All right, what are we doing now? Are we right. still filming over here? No, you can All right. Back. <sighs> All right, tell me if I got it on there good. Can you see yourself? Okay. Well, now we're going to start with the dumplings. And I always use white lily. And for the size that I make, I just get the uh, two-pound bag. It just makes it simple that way. And just use the whole two-pound bag of white lily self-rising flour. 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 Oh, I got me a new job. What? Got me a new job. Doing what? Teaching language on Babel, the app. <laughs> I'm teaching Southernese. You need so. to teach Southernese. Okay, what do you need? All right. What do you need, Chef? I need a spoon. To get up the okay. Crisco. Keep an eye on I'll keep an eye on Move the cross over here, baby. And that's another thing when when you um so I made I tried making chicken dumplings several times throughout my life back. Um, years ago, I'd make them. You know, I'd see my. I'd always watch Mama make them, and they were always kind of special with Mama because Daddy he didn't really like chicken dumplings, so we didn't get chicken dumplings a whole lot. But she'd make them on Sundays sometimes or whatever, and, and I always liked chicken and dumplings. But every time I would make chicken and dumplings, I do. You know, I thought I was doing them right, and uh, I'd go and cut them out and put them in the back into the stock part, pot and they just fall apart and just turn into a big old mess. I guess I finally asked mom, you know, what the deal was and that's where I was telling the most important part is to make sure your Crisco is chilled. I keep it in the refrigerator and then you chill the, the uh, chicken broth 
and uh, that's the that's the key to keeping your dumplings from falling apart. So anyway, this is three quarters cup, two pound bag, three quarter cup of Crisco. That's good old fashioned Crisco. That's the good fat stuff. Oh, where's that pastry cutter at? Yes, ma'am. And, uh, and take the pastry cutter. I'm going to mix um, we'll cut in the, the Crisco into the flour. And um, <laughs> like I say, I've always enjoyed cooking. And then didn't know I, uh, I was a fireman for many years, retired from fire department. And uh, so I'm the first day on the job, I was 19 years old. And uh, matter of fact, it was like March the 1st of 1980. It was on a Sunday. I was born in 1980. Please. <laughs> and uh, there's about six inches of sleet on the ground. It sleeted that night before. I was scared to death going trying to get to work the first shift. Six inches of sleet on the ground. I get there like at 4 30 in the morning. But anyway, the guy I was placed um, made the biscuits. So here I am at this station. We had like 12 guys on the shift, and they didn't have nobody to make biscuits. I said, Okay, hey. you make biscuits. Of course, I said, Absolutely. And I had never made a biscuit before in my entire life, ever. I've watched my mama. My mama was an award winning biscuit maker, and I mean, she was. She won an award from. Boy Scout, she made about 900 biscuits one day for a Boy Scout fundraiser. I could so use 900 biscuits. So, um, so we sold sauce and biscuits. That's another story. But anyway, so I'm going, what have I got myself into? I ain't never made a biscuit before in my life. And if these things turn out wrong, I will never live it down. I'll be ridiculed. So I first thing I do is get on the phone with my mom and say, how do you make a biscuit? So she kind of walked me through it. And I went over there, I made a pan of biscuits. And I don't know if it was a curse or, or, uh, or a blessing, but the biscuits turned out good. And, and if I had a dollar, Shoot, if I had a quarter for every biscuit I made in my career on the fire department, I'd be a wealthy man. So I've made biscuits for years. So anyway, that's how my cooking career got started on the fire department. And then I ended up cooking probably two meals a day for years. You done with your pastry? All right. So we got the Crisco and it mixed in with good with uh, the flour and I've got I've got four cups we're not used all if we don't we'll just put it back in the stock pot but anyway and I'm going to use the best mix and tool that God ever invented ever gave us and that's our hand so I washed my hands really good before we got started so anyway um just going to pour in probably about half of this to start with and this is another it's, you can. And uh, this is another thing. It's just kind of. You know, Hold on, y'all. It's just kind of an eyeball thing, to, the consistency you need. And uh, she's got the camera up here close. I'll kind of show you where it needs to be. It's messy, but it's good. And. Uh, but I do, I I enjoy 
I enjoy making. I enjoy cooking. I mean, in general, Mary Jane enjoys me cooking. You Mix got some. that right. <laughs> So we'll just get it all mixed in. So really, I only used about two cups so far, and that's probably going to be about about enough. How's the consistency on that? Just well, I mean, it's about like, sticky. It's, or? it's about like biscuit dough, you know. I mean, uh, you can see there. I mean, it's um, you don't want it real sticky, but it's going to be flaky. So, anyway, that's about right, and I'm gonna have to get this dough off my hands. And uh, all right, I'm so where are we going now? To the sink. You know, <laughs> sit there and let everybody. Lord, y'all don't look at our nasty sink. Tell me, Joe. Here, here's Jack. There's our famous little puppy, Jack. I know that um, a lot of y'all knew Bubba, and I too miss Bubba. I know y'all probably miss seeing him too, but if he were here, he would definitely be right next to that one right there, trying to get some kind of chicken scrap or something. So, all right, folks, we're going right. to turn it back around here. What we're going to do... Hold on, let me get the camera set there, buddy. Put just a little bit more flour on the dough, then I'm gonna cover the. We just got this thing from Tupperware, I guess it is. Yeah. Little rolling sheet. It's like a pie to make pie crust for pizzas, that That's sort of thing. Can, so I'm just cover it pretty good with a, some flour. Oh, let me go stir this stuff. And I'm just gonna. Divide this dough into thirds and get it uh, just kind of form it into a ball. Put it on the flour. Like I say, it's messy. There's going to be flour on the floor, probably flour on Jack if you ain't careful. And, uh, Let me know. Do you think I need to, to come? Move the camera again because can't really see you what you're doing. Sorry, y'all. I know y'all are probably getting dizzy. But um. Okay. Just gonna roll these out and roll them pretty thin. And uh, because they're gonna fluff up, it's self rising flour, so they're gonna fluff up pretty good. So uh, roll them pretty thin. Kind of like thickness of cookies when you roll cookies out. We got anybody watching us? Um, we have a few people watching us, honey. How many? 21. 21. I know. Yay. I'm so excited. Hey, this is our first time. Hey, no, really? You think they figured that? Our, we, we're look, the next one's going to be, Murray's going to make her mama's Famous strawberry pie. I didn't say I would do that. Well, you're going to. Who's going to make me? Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, the best thing to cut these things, these dumplings out with is a pizza cutter. You just cut them out into about, I don't know, two inch squares, maybe. You don't have to be that pretty consistent. You just... You know, some of them may be two inch, some of them may be half square, some of them may not be square at all. And Well, you need some that are going to turn out thick and some that are going to turn and, out uh, thin because some people like thick so, dumplings like me. You know, just pick them up and put them on the plate. They got plenty of flour on the bottom of them to kind of keep them separated and keep them from sticking. Um... But my mama, she was probably the best cook. That, and I know everybody says that, but I'm telling you, anybody ate my mama's cooking knows I ain't telling the story. She can make one of the best biscuits. Now, mama had a, 
she had old wooden dobo and it kept flowering it all the time and she put it in a plastic garbage bag and stick it in the cabinet the next morning and i'm telling you she could whoop up a batch of homemade biscuit by the time most people get a a thing of canned biscuits out of the thing and whop them and open them up and put them on pan mama could just about make a can of bit i mean a, a pan of biscuits just about as quick and a heck of a lot better and like one preacher friend because daddy always brought preachers home and they always ate mom's cooking and uh one of the preacher friends said that your mama she sure could make a good biscuit but she sure knew how to butter a biscuit so she would put probably about a fourth of a stick of butter to one biscuit she knew how to butter a biscuit so um that boy when you pick that biscuit up the butter just run out of it we i was a big fan of sodom syrup back in the day when i was a kid and just always put butter in my sodom syrup and you just get that hot butter and just let it in your sodom syrup just mixed up and whoo i could eat a dog bait of that but uh anyway we're on our second come over here and show them the floor <laughs> dana classic just said messy cook <laughs> so let's just see how messy let's just see how messy oh it's not that bad Jack, I've, jack's licking I've, I've seen it or i've seen it worse but anyway all right this is kind of like i gotta put this back up I'm, i gotta because i gotta stir oh sorry y'all you can see our living room <laughs> my second bad I'm, I'm hurrying up oh take your time we got all day we need got nowhere to go we're incarcerated that's right but anyway do you want this to be boiling i now? do that's another another tip for making good dumplings when you go to put your dumplings drop them in the into the stew into back into the pot you need that pot boiling you need it rolling you need it what rolling rolling and um so <clears throat> you can only put a few in at a time stir them up put a few in at a time stir them up keep it boiling and um, another tip now just remember that cold stock cold kiss crisco and hot broth boiling hot hot so we're going last to, one last one i'm gonna put your water up here so here we go like a little flower on it a little baby's butt Put a little powder on the baby, but you are such a knucklehead. Now we're gonna roll this out. You know, dude, there's something. I mean, I know it's getting close to summertime or springtime. There's just something about a bowl of chicken and dumplings on a cold, rainy winter day that warm you up make you just feel good inside yeah i, I don't care what the weather is i like <laughs> chicken dumplings any kind of weather here you're getting a little close to the oh. edge over there oh get those dumplings when they fall on the floor oh. all right i can't stand it i have to move them out of the way ah. all right last time last cutting And uh, one of our episodes, episodes, boy, that <laughs> I told you I'm teaching with Southern Ease. One of our episodes will be Grandmama Cable pound cake. Oh, Lord, yes. She made the best pound cake. Everything she made was good. And uh, I don't know, I ain't talked to him yet, but may have some guests. 
appearances. I wasn't never, I ain't never made one of mammo cable, um, sweet potato pies. But Randall, he makes a pretty good, my brother, he makes a pretty good sweet potato pie. My grandmother, um, she got rave reviews. Everybody, and, and she loved it to death because go to church, eating at church. If you didn't get some of her sweet potato pie the first round through to get your food, you didn't get it by the time you went and got dessert because it was gone. Everybody would get her sweet potato pie. And she made her crust with lard. But she made her biscuits with lard. There wasn't no Crisco in her house. And it was lard. Oh, um, and lard. Boy, yeah. <laughs> and her biscuits. I'd do anything to have one of her biscuits oh. right now. They were they were what she called tough, you know. But they were a little it was, but they were because they were made with lard and boy, but they they sure would was good. I must be made out of lard. <laughs> But, but I always like mama. I always, I always like don't. Now I'll forgive me, but I always like mama's biscuits better. She made hers with Crisco. Um, All right, now what? Time to move the camera again. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna rinse my hands off. Kind of sounds like that whole sweet hey, potato Ken thing. Hey, Debbie Foster. That sweet little sweet potato thing that he was talking about with his with his mamma that everybody had to kind of get back before the meal was over. That's what happens with his dumplings. It must run in the family. <laughs> hey, Glenn. All right. Let me swap this camera around again. All right, we're boiling here, honey. That's what she said. Shh. Nathan. Better be careful ah. what you say. Or right, you may want to. I need another spoon. You're going to have to get out of my way. Well, don't even. I'm the one with the camera. Tell me to get out of the way. Uh, no, Jeffrey, I am not washing as I go. I usually do, but I'm having to play camera person today. Do we so. have a slotted spoon? I'll just use this. All right. Lord, I ain't got no slot. We got a ton of them downstairs. Is that loud enough? Yeah, that's plenty of loud. So I get three or four, and I just kind of... just. Slop them in no, there. No, I drop them in about one time and, and always give them a good stirring. You know, and I just I dry, kind of drop them on the spoon so they don't splash. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, you yeah. get splashed with the, some hot uh, dumpling bra, it'll leave a mark. Also leaves a mess on the stove. It does, especially if you let them boil over. Mm. And guess who gets to clean up? <sighs> Um, Hazel. No, my name is not Hazel. <laughs> <sighs> Lord. Anybody watch Hazel back in the day? Yes, I loved me some Hazel. Andy Griffin. Ain't B, I bet she could make a good chicken and dumpling. I bet she could too. Oh, Glenn Houchins wants you to recite the biscuit making in your auctioneer voice. <laughs> well, yeah, he he might have to do something like that in a minute. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to make a biscuit here now. What do you say? Who's throwing me out there on the biscuit? I got two pounds of flour in the three-quarter cup. Crisco, we're gonna mix it all up. Gonna cut it in. Gonna cut it in right now. What do you say on that? Gonna cut it in. Uh, <laughs> That's pretty funny, honey. You've never done that before. Hey, the first time for everything. We got uh, three beautiful daughters, and not like I say when I when I retired from the fire department. I uh, one day I couldn't spell auctioneer, and a, and a few months later I was one. <laughs> so um, I've been auctioneering now for. Ooh, tell you how old I'm getting. I think this is going to be year 18 as of May, I think about May the 1st, be 18 years I've been in the auction business. So, um, 
some our daughters got married and we had their ceremony, you know, their religious ceremony and preacher married them. And then uh, we got ready to have the mail and reception or whatever and we had an auctioneer's wedding. <laughs> that was so funny. I couldn't even I couldn't even begin to to even do it now. But uh, uh, but that was pretty good. I had a I married them off auctioneer style. And uh we'll have to hunt that C D up in one of our episodes we'll have to now why do I keep saying episodes? <laughs> Cause you're a country, country boy. <laughs> oh, but I love you. And anyway, it takes a minute. I'm telling you, man, you make a big old... Lord, because look how many he's still got on the plate. You make a big old bait of chicken and dumplings. I mean, it takes a minute to get all of them in there. Because you just can't throw them in there willy-nilly. How, how's that again? Willy-nilly. Because if you want a big old glob of dough and some hot chicken broth, you just dump them all in there at one time. And you could probably pave a street pothole with them. But uh, you kind of got to treat them like you do a woman. Just real easy and gentle. Well. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be getting no ideas, Murray. Oh, please, Nathan. Really? Really? <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself talking like that. But anyway, for y'all that don't know, I'm, I've been battling a little um, cancer over the last three years. And uh, so I got non Hodgkin lymphoma. And um, I've been through, I had a stem cell transplant February of last year. And um, but I'm, I was blessed with two different types of lymphoma. I've got an aggressive type and I've got a slow growing type and the stem cell works for the aggressive type but it don't the slow growing type. So the aggressive type is in remission but the the slower growing type has come back and so I'm still battling it but um, Mary Jane and I, we're leaving in the morning to go down to Tampa, to Moffitt Cancer Center down in Tampa. My doctor up here, Dr. Uh, Cohen down at uh, Windship Cancer Center. Uh, they don't have this clinical trial going on there at um, Emory, so he uh, recommended we go down there to Moffitt. So we're going down there for our initial visit. Might got to be there Monday morning at 8 o'clock, but we're going down there tomorrow. And, uh, you know, we're traveling down. It's going to kind of just stay in a room, but... Uh, she can't, Mary Jane can't even go to the doctor's office with me to, or to the hospital and see. So we're going to have to kind of conference her in on FaceTime. But, um, but anyway, if you're praying tight, just pray for us as we go through this. And tell you what, the Lord's blessed us through these last three years. And I just put all my faith in Him. And even with all this stuff going on with Corona, I mean, good Lord has got... He's uh he's in control, folks, and um, he's uh there's if it, even like with the cancer, there's always something good comes out of something bad, and if there's one thing something good that's came out of this whole Corona, keeping families together at home, and I, I hope it's that it's brought them back closer to Christ, and. Uh, you know, I mean, it has us, and we're keeping Christ in the forefront. You know, and it, we ought to have been doing it every time, but, you know, we stop, and we have prayer together, you know, every day at 7 o'clock. And, uh, and it's something we ought to, you know, we, we try to do it, but, you know, we need to put it in here coming up on uh, this um, Easter, um, you know, just like Good Friday. Everything looked pretty gloom for the for the Christians, but three days later, we got a redeemer and uh, that saved us. 
and it was resurrected. And um, I'll tell you what, it's a great thing. And I hope out of all this badness that's going on in the world, there's something good to come out of it. And uh, getting people back closer to Christ would be a wonderful thing. Anyway, all right, I'll just turn them down as low as they go. Can I put this down now? Yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all, yeah, hold um, on. And what I want to do, I mean, we're about done. Because I ain't going to keep you around here the whole time. But, well, let's go back over here. Um, take that lid off. You know, see the crock pot way over here? What I do. Is that the crock pot, y'all? It's crock pot. And um, here in just a minute, I'm going to transfer all the dumplings into this crock pot. Because they need to cook real low. And I just found the crock pot is the best way to cook these dumplings. Another tip from Nene cook these dumplings in a crock pot. Yeah. And um, in place of, you know, getting ready, because I get up, you know, seven or eight o'clock. Make these, make a batch of them, take the turk, and you know, I get them and I put them in the crock pot. I get them up, I put them up on high and start with the start boiling, and then I'll, I'll just start them down on low. We'll take them to church, and, and while we're having church, I'll just put them on warm. And uh, down by the time church, sometimes I may have to add a, a little water to them, might be have to add some water to them. Uh, you know, right before we set them on the table, just thin them up a little bit, but telling you what, it makes them killer. Um, dumplings, cook them in the crock pot. Low and slow, as they say. So, um, anyway. Lord, this dog has flour all over his head. <laughs> I told you Jack won't have no flour. Oh, baby. <coughs> oh. So, anyway, this was episode, season one, episode yeah. one. And let just look out. We're gonna. We've started a Facebook page or group. I guess yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a group. And it's uh, cooking with Nene and Murray. Um, so we just want to kind of do a little test run on live here. We're gonna probably get this site, you know, that page uh, group up and running. We'll invite you to come and join us for our next episode, but. It'll be a it'll be a week or two probably because uh, like I said we're going to Tampa when we get back to Tampa get some fresh strawberries. <laughs>
or like us on Facebook. Tag along to done that. So Dang it. Oh my God, I'm going to take that thing away from you.